exhibition honouring flamehead beauties to some romantic reads for Valentine's Day. Thanks for joining us for Encore. And I'm joined in the studio by our book critic, Catherine Clifford. Cathy, hello. Hi. Thanks for being here. Now, these days, fewer people celebrate Valentine's Day in the traditional sense. We're living in a world where fewer people are getting married. Many people live alone. So what sort of books are people looking for? What sort of things do people want to read in 2019 about love? Well, believe it or not, romance genre novels, uh, as much as they're sometimes looked down on as lowbrow, uh, they're actually among the book industry's top sellers, uh, up there with crime novels. Um, and they're statistically more likely to be read by older women. So that begs the question, um, what, what do younger generations want to read about love? Uh, so uh, many millennials, like myself, grew up on a, a sickly diet of rom-coms and uh, lots being said and written about that leading to unrealistic expectations when it comes to love so I think a lot of people that for them the the traditional uh, romantic story arc isn't going to cut it anymore and they're really looking for more detail uh, more realistic details um, strong female characters um, within love stories uh, all, meanwhile the playing field has also shifted of course a lot of dating takes place online nowadays specifically uh, around 41 percent of uh, online singles around the world are thought to um, have gone on dating sites or apps within within the past month or so there's really a different uh, changing appetite for what people want to read about love in, in literature okay so which writers are taking love stories in new directions so uh, she's a very big deal in the UK and Ireland at the moment. I, um, Irish writer oh. Sally Rooney, um, if you haven't already heard of her, she's been dubbed the Salinger of the Snapchat generation. And uh, she writes particularly well about modern love. Her first novel, Conversations with Friends, is a story of um, a young bisexual student who gets caught up in a sort of love uh, square or love quadrangle. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's told across different platforms, like, uh, like uh, instant messaging, email, text. Um, and her second book, uh, Normal People, is one of uh, the best love stories I've read uh, recently, actually. And uh, it has such strong characterization. Um, it's told ac across class divides. Um, it's been called a, a next, a future classic. And it's, um, it's, uh, it was shortlisted for the Man Booker. It won the, the Costa Book Prize, making Sally Rooney the youngest uh, author to have won that at just, at just 27. OK, I'm going to borrow that after the show. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also a big fan of Hera Lindsay Bird, who, who writes really unique um, love poetry. And she manages to be, to be um, sentimental, but at the same time ironic, at the same time sexually explicit, um, and really with really beautiful imagery and, and language very different very unique um, and probably the best novel that one of the best novels I read last year was Melissa Broder's The Pisces which is the the story of um, a young woman yo yo who's been dumped she's yo-yoing between uh, sex addiction the love addiction therapy and um, and binging on these disastrous uh, tinder dates and uh, she, um, so it's partly this hilarious parody on modern love and, and dating and also a, a foray into magical realism because she falls in love with a merman and <laughs> this then leads to some very intricately imagined uh, love scenes. So, okay, sounds very merman. interesting. What about the new releases then? Okay, so uh, Lena Wolf's the, the Polyglot Lovers is about to hit bookshops on the start of April. Um, it did very well in Sweden. It was written in Swedish. It won uh, Sweden's top literary prize, the, the August Prize. And it's, um, it's a complex book. The timeline is told in reverse. So it's told from several different narrative points. Uh, we begin with a, with a woman whose her passion in life is fighting and she fights in this local fight club. She decides to try out online dating and this brings her into the life of an odious uh, literary critic in Stockholm. She comes from a small village. Um, and he uh, is looking after this precious manuscript. It's the only copy um, of an author who has been um, cursed by a suicidal receptionist who he um, rejected. Okay. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's, no, it's, uh, it's wry, it's darkly funny, particularly the facts about internet dating. And uh, there's also a lot of humour in how unpredictable the characters 
uh, were. Uh, it's not it's not one that's going to warm the cockles of your heart, but it's a really interesting and clever look at uh, the the quest for love. Okay, well I want warm heart cockles, so I'm not going to read that one. Okay, and if you had to choose your ultimate love story in literature, what would it be? Um, so I've spoken a lot about women, uh, female authors for now. Uh, of course, men can write about love as well. Uh, <laughs> I love uh, Louis de Vernier's uh, Captain Corelli's Mandolin. I think the mix of, uh, of humour, of tragedy and of um, a missed opportunity for me just makes this book just almost unbearably uh, touching. <laughs> okay, well, Cathy, thank you so much for coming and telling us about your Valentine's Day book picks definitely be borrowing some of those afterwards okay moving on now for the first time in France a major art exhibit has been dedicated to the Hungarian born father of op art Victor Vassarelli who spent much of his life in France is known for his use of optical illusion more than 300 of his works are on display at the Pompidou Centre in Paris Catherine Viette reports the art of optical illusions and abstract geometry. The movement known as op art or optical art has taken over the Centre Pompidou. Victor Vassarelli is widely seen as one of the founders of this type of abstract art, which sprang to life in the 1960s. At the time, Vassarelli was fascinated with the concept of cybernetic art. There is a strong movement which stimulates the eye's retina and elicits different responses based on one's own subjectivity. Today, Vasarelli is considered as a pioneer of digital art because when you look closely at one of his paintings, you see that the surface is pixelated. Each square was like a unit of data. Vasarelli started out as an illustrator in advertising. He drew inspiration from photographs taken through a microscope. By the 1960s, his experimental style was gaining visibility and popularity. In train stations, fashion, television and music, with David Bowie asking him to design this album cover. What are the secrets behind his art? The answer lies in Aix-en-Provence at the Vassarelli Foundation. In the archives, his grandson has conserved the drafts, or rather the code, behind his works. The number one here corresponds to this color shade. Number three we see here. It's the association of these colors and geometric forms that gives his art the effect of an optical illusion. Today, digital art is quite accessible, but before its creation, Vasarely had already conceived it. Vasarely's work has had a profound global impact, serving as a precursor to digital art some 50 years before our time. Next, Helen of Troy, Jessica Rabbit, Nicole Kidman, Julianne Moore, Jessica Chastain and Prince Harry and myself, they all have one thing in common, their luscious red hair. An exhibition in Paris is honouring artistic representations from the 20th century until now of people with this very uncommon trait. Erin Agudki reports. A central painting of a woman, a portrait of David Bowie, masks from Papua New Guinea, or mannequins modelled after designer Sonia Riquel. The subjects all share one common attribute, red hair. On display, 100 works of art to counter prejudices surrounding red hair, a trait that has long been the subject of both hostility and fascination. Prejudice towards redheads is often associated with violence, meaning they're perceived as angry, wicked, aggressive, violent, with boiling blood. Perceived as manipulative or even possessed by the devil, women with crimson locks inspired numerous 19th century artists. In paintings, they're often depicted as being sensual or cruel, reflections of societal stereotypes. Red adds flair to artwork, makes it stand out, and when the subject is naked, red adds an element of eroticism. Renowned French designer Sonia Raquel used her iconic red tresses as a weapon of seduction. 
For my mother, red hair was a distinctive trait, a positive one to take advantage of. It was a symbol of strength, something that made her different from everybody else. And that's how she liked it. But for others, having red hair is a source of pain. Representing just 2% of the population, they're often ridiculed or humiliated. I'm 53 years old and I'm part of a generation that was bullied at school. Even later, when I'd go to nightclubs in my 20s, it continued. Photographer Pascal Saclou uses his profession to help break the stigma associated with red hair. I really want to showcase redheads, show people they're not uglier than others, and show redheads themselves they're beautiful and should be proud of who they are. Despite some prejudice, redheaded heroes fill the pages of French youth literature, and the popularity of Prince Harry and pop star Ed Sheeran have made red hair an undeniably attractive characteristic. They now have a dedicated exhibition and the emojis to prove it. Lots of red-haired beauties there. The exhibition is on at the Jean-Jacques Henna Museum in the 17th arrondissement of Paris until the 19th of May. Next, Valentine's Day is a good time to take your loved one or your mate to the cinema to see a nice rom-com. Have you got a favourite? Um, comedy? I'd have to admit a guilty pleasure for a bit of Bridget Jones. Bridget Jones is a good <laughs> one. I think um, My Best Friend's Wedding might be my favourite. In 2019, the romantic comedy is in good shape after last year saw crazy rich Asians become a global smash. Isn't It Romantic, which is out in cinemas now, is a parody of the genre starring Rebel Wilson. We'll leave you with that. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. I think I might be going crazy. I hit my head really hard and I woke up in this alternate universe. And now I have a gay sidekick who's setting gay rides back like a hundred years. I love working the legs. Jesus! And guys look at me in the eyes. You're quite beguiling, aren't you? Are you feeling what I'm feeling? No! Oh my God. I think I'm trapped in a My life's become a mother romantic comedy. And it's PG-13!